Howdy again, everybody. This is Doc coming to you with the Penn National Playback. It is the replay of the races that were contested at Penn National Racecourse on Friday, July 10th, 2020. We had eight races on this card, and we were off the turf and sloppy main track because of all-day rains that were happening in Central PA. But nonetheless, we had some nice full fields, very competitive races. Uh, because of the changes, there was no Super High Five jackpot in the third, and there was no Late Pick 5 on today's card. Those carryovers will, of course, carry over to the next card on Wednesday. So let's get right to it with the first. And the first is a maiden claiming event, 25,000 down to 22,500 for maidens, fillies, and mares, three year olds and upward. This was originally carded at a mile and 70 yards on the turf, but since we're off the turf today, it is a mile and 70 on the sloppy main track for a purse of 18,100, and we had a field of seven in the opener. Betty's got rhythm broke sharply. Racing my father speeds up inside then. It's uh, Julia Aminati. Julia Aminati has moved through to put ahead in front now. Racing my father is second. And then uh, moving up toward the rail then comes Amplio Esquima gaining third. They're then followed between horses by Betty's Got Rhythm now fourth. And to the outside then, it's Eclipticals Dancer. Then about a length to call on Claire and the early trailer is Solo Try. They head to the back stretch through an opening quarter of 23 and 2. And taking the lead now is Racing My Father. She's got it three parts of a length. Julia Aminati is next between horses then. Betty's got rhythm. And to the outside then, Eclipticals Dancer. Amplio Esquima is next along the inside. Then just over a length uh, to the trailing pair here of Solo Try. And call on Clara. 48 and 1 for the half. Beginning to bunch a little bit now as they move to the turn. And moving up to poke ahead in front, it's Eclipticals Dancer. And Betty's got rhythm on the move now as well. They're then followed by Amplio Esquima splitting foes. Inside then, Julia Aminati has given up ground, trying to move up then call on Clara, followed then by Solo Try and dropping back sharply, racing my father. As they head to the top of the stretch, Betty's got rhythm is cleared. She's there by about three and a half lengths now. Cutting the corner now, trying to move up. Here's call on Clara. They're then followed by Amplio Esquima, who's leveled off with her bid. Betty's got Got rhythm holding it here. Call on Clara is moving through inside. Call on Clara's caught. Betty's got rhythm with 70 yards to go, and Call on Clara's going on to score. Betty's got rhythm will be second. It was Amplio Esquima third with Solo try fourth. And you can call her the winner and call her a nice winner at that at 25 to 1 as Call on Clara takes the rail route through the stretch to get up in about the final seven yards over Betty's Got Rhythm in the opener here. So it was Call on Clara to win it. 52, 40, 15, 60, and 580. Betty's Got Rhythm for the place, $5.320. And number four, Amplio Esquema for the show, $3. $2 exacta, nine and seven, $235.40. $1 trifecta, 9, 7, and 4, $454.90. And the dime super, 9, 7, 4, 5, 170, 62. The winner is owned by Jeanette Reck, was bred by Barry Ostringer, trained by Christopher Reck, and ridden to victory by Ricardo Chiappe. And the second half of the double is another off-the-turf event. This is an allowance for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won a race other than maiden claiming starter or PA bred. We had a nice field of eight going forward here. Five furlongs on the sloppy main track for a purse of 28000 There! Slow start for number five. Don't blame Birdie. Zippy Joe out for the lead inside. Lady Munning shows speed also moving up. It's Can I Get an Amen? Zippy Joe has it a half length. Can I get an amen now? Second, Lady Munnings is third. And to the outside, Bally is racing fourth. And, and moving up uh, then for between horses, don't blame Birdie. The far outside, Brooklyn surprise along the rail. Then it's determined love. And the early trailer is unemotional. 22 and 4 for the opening quarter. Can I get an amen? Now takes it as they approach the quarter pole. Now moving through inside, finding some racing room. Don't blame Birdie. And she's looking to challenge. Next to uh, the outside, right there is Lady Munnings, the far outside. It's Determined Love. They come by the eighth pole. Determined Love, Lady Munnings, they go on here. 
Can I get an amen? And don't blame Birdie if weakened inside. It's Determined Love, Lady Munnings, Lady Munnings to win it. Determined Love was second, tight for third here. Can I get an amen? Or don't blame Birdie. And a great two-horse stretch battle to the wire here inside the final eighth with Lady Munnings just maintaining an edge over Determined Love, who was determined, but second yet again in the second here at Penn National. We'll call it by about oh, a half length. And it was Lady Munnings, $1064.63, Determined Love, $4.280. And getting up for show in that photo is Can I Get a Night Man? $4.80 to show. The $2 exacta, 6 and 2, 34, 20. The $1 trifecta, 6, 2 and 3, 106, 50. The dime super, 6, 2, 3 and 5, 20, 34. The $2 double, 9 and 6, $337 even. The winner was bred right here in Pennsylvania by Mr. and Mrs. Rodman Moorhead III. Owned by Buttonwood Farm, trained by Jonathan Shepard, and ridden to victory by Andrew Walsant. And the third is a claiming event, 62.5 down to 6,000 for three-year-olds and upward. This originally was carded for five furlongs on the turf, taken off the turf, so it'll be run at five furlongs on the sloppy main track. And we had a field of six go postward here for a purse of 15,400. They're in the gate. They're off. She's on for the lead the far outside. Page down moves up between horses, and they're then followed toward the rail by Tweet Kitten. She's on the outside. Page down inside, heads apart for the lead. Length and a half then now to get a Valentine who's moved up to take third. Tweet Kitten is back to fourth. And another two lengths to Stormy Engagement. And Gohara is at the back with about five to make up. 22 flat for the opening quarter. To the outside, she's on a short advantage now, racing to the quarter pole. Page down is next. Tweet Kitten on the move, splitting horses. To the outside then, get a Valentine is next. Then you go back to a Gohara and Stormy Engagement as they race to the eighth pole. She's on, leads it by about two here. Tweet Kitten has moved up the outside now. Second page down third. Get a Valentine is backed out of there and is uh, being eased here but it's Cheese On widening his advantage. Cheese On! With command. Tweet Kitten was next then came page down and Gohara. And really, I mean, who really doesn't love cheese? Uh, maybe if you're lactose intolerant, as Cheese On just pours it on in the stretch, uh, pulling away under a drive. Tweet Kitten certainly did make it um, an interesting run at the top of the stretch, but Cheese On much the best winner here. And it was Cheese On, 760, 320, 260. Tweet Kitten, 320, 260. Page down, 380. $2 exacta, 11 and 2, 1760. $1 trifecta, 11, 2 and 6, 4280. The 10 cent super, 11, 2, 6, and 1, 25, 36. The $2 double, 6 and 11, 45, 20. And the 50 cent pick three, 9, 6, and 11, $302 even. Again, the uh, super high five was not offered on this race, so that carryover will move to Wednesday's card, hopefully. The winner is owned by Tom McCarty, was trained by Timothy Kreiser. bred by David Baxter, and ridden to victory by David Cora. Uh, for those that did notice that Get a Valentine did seem to stop at the top of the stretch there. Uh, it was reported that he bled and was pulled up, but otherwise is doing fine. And the fourth. This is an allowance for registered Pennsylvania Brits, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won a race other than maiden claiming or starter. We had seven PA Breds go to the post here. They are traveling a mile and 70 on the sloppy main track for a purse of 31600 Ready for the start. They're off. 50 flags for the lead inside. Moving up, there goes Rolling Palisades, and to the outside then, Octorora Orphe. They head to the first turn. 50 flags has it by just a neck. Rolling Palisades is second. OK Game On is rushed up inside now to take third. And to the outside, it's a Fleet Tracks who's moved to fourth. Boys of Queens has taken fifth. Then comes Octorora Orphe and Brave Deacon. 23 and 2 for the first quarter. They race to the back stretch. 50 flags on top, three parts of a length. Rolling Palisades to second. OK, game on. Settles in third, a length and a half from the lead. To the outside comes the fleet tracks. Boys of Queens is next, followed by. 
Brave Deacon Octorora Orphe now seventh and last. They continue on the back stretch here with 50 flags taking them along three parts of a length and rolling palisades right there second. Okay, game on along the rail. Third's going to need some running room now as they move to the turn. About two lengths into a fleet tracks with Boys of Queens. Brave Deacon looks to kick it in. Octoror Orphe still at the back. 47 and 4 for the half. And okay, game on. Finds a seam along the rail and a shot through to put ahead in front now. To the outside, Rolling Palisades is right there with 50 flags in between that pair. These three is a team, the head of the lane. There's some five lengths then back to Boys of Queens, followed by Brave Deacon. As they come to the eighth pole, OK Game On uh, has it now by three parts. Rolling Palisades is next. 50 flags is weakened, trying to move up Boys of Queens. But it's OK Game On who's drawing off at the end here. OK Game On to win it. Rolling Palisades was second. Boys of Queens got third it was brave deacon finishing fourth and wayne's world fans can rejoice at the result of this one as okay game on just pulled away in mid stretch to win pretty easily to take this allowance event so it was okay game on 440 322 number four rolling palisades place 440 and four dollars number one boys and queens up for show 780 the two dollar exact at three and four twenty forty. The one dollar trifecta three four and one sixty two sixty. The dime super three four one nine thirty two ninety. The fifty cent pick three six eleven and three thirty nine forty. The fifty cent pick four nine six eleven and three eight hundred four dollars and five cents. The winner was bred right here in Pennsylvania by Kenneth Groff. Is owned by Robert Durr, trained by Tim Kreiser for back-to-back -back wins on this card, and ridden to victory by Edwin Gonzalez. We will be right back with the bottom half of the card after this. Welcome back to the playback as we move on with the card here on July 10th with race number five. This is a $4,000 claiming event for three rolls and upward, which have not run two races in the last six months. They are going six furlongs over the sloppy main track for a purse of 10,800. And we had a field of eight line up for this one. Expediter reloaded. There. Calculated thinking for the lead, Expediter shoots through toward the rail and to the outside of Pango and the far outside Vinny Boy. Expediter takes it by a half length now. Calculated thinking is second, Vinny Boy now third. Pango races fourth inside, St. Michael is fifth. Runaway is moved up sixth, then comes incensed with Team Rebo. They race to the turn here. Opening quarter 22 and 2, and Calculated thinking holds it just ahead. To the inside, then Expediter battles back. Now these two are on equal terms. About a length and a half, then to Vinny Boy, racing third. Inside, St. Michael is next. Panga looks to move up. They're then followed by Runaway. Then comes Incense. Then about four to the trailer team, Rebo. They head to the top of the stretch. Calculated thinking the outside takes over a half length. Inside, Expediter looks to stay with the favorite here. Vinny Boy is next, followed by St. Michael and Runaway. But it's Calculated thinking opening up by nearly three now. Expediter is holding second with Vinny Boy and Runaway. Calculated thinking with command. Expediter was next with Vinny Boy and Runaway. And make that three in a row on the night for trainer Tim Kreiser. He actually trained the uh, first and second place finishers here. And two in a row on the night for jockey Edwin Gonzalez. His calculated thinking 
Yeah, he had this one figured out pretty much from the start. Just take command at the top of the stretch and pull away from there as he is a much the best winner who relished the slop today in the fifth at Penn National. So it was the favorite calculated thinking for $43.240. Expediter, four sixty and three twenty. Number one, Vinny Boy, three twenty to show. Two dollar exact to five and three fifteen eighty. One dollar trifecta, five three and one thirty three twenty. The ten cent super, five three one and eleven ten dollars forty seven cents. The all Gonzalez deli double, three and five eleven sixty. The all Chrysler pick three, eleven three and five fourteen thirty five. And the winner is owned by Robert Dirt, was bred by Doug Branham and Felicia Branham. Trained, of course, by Tim Kreiser, his third in a row and third on the evening. And ridden to victory by Edwin Gonzalez, his second in a row and second on the evening. A field of nine went postward in the sixth. This is an allowance optional claiming with claiming price of $25,000 if you so choose. They're going a mile on the sloppy main track, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races other than maiden claiming starter or PA bread. And the field of nine was going for a purse of $28,900. One dozen banks out for the early lead. Athelstane goes right with them, and to the outside, it's Midnight Act. They head to the first turn. One dozen banks inside with Athelstane heads apart for the lead. Midnight Act is racing third. Sepicato is in the fourth spot. Between runners then comes Blow the Whistle, and to the outside, then it's Let Me Go First. Then inside comes Bold Brotherhood. He's joined by the great Gasby, two lengths to Vouch, who's ninth and last early. 24 flat for the opening quarter. They straighten on the back stretch and to the outside, Athelstane puts ahead in front. One dozen banks is back to second. There's about two and a half lengths to Midnight Act third. Sepicato races fourth. Blow the whistles in the fifth spot. There's about three and a half lengths then back to the great Casby. To the outside then comes Let Me Go First, followed by Bolt Brotherhood. Still at the back is Vouch. The half 47 and one. The pace quickened there through the second quarter and it's still one dozen banks with Athel Stain and looking uh, to move up uh, the outside midnight act now. Sepicato's inside. They're then followed by Blow the Whistle. There's about four lengths then to Bolt Brotherhood who's moving up with good energy. Vouch is on the move. The Great Casby now second last and dropping out of it. Let me go first as they hit the top of the stretch. Here's Midnight Act up to take a short lead down the center now. Here comes Blow the Whistle to move to second and to the outside Bolt Brotherhood. One dozen banks inside is weakened. Midnight Act leads it here to the outside. Blow the whistle. Midnight Act to win it. Blow the whistle was second. Bolt Brotherhood got third. One dozen banks was fourth. He began his winning move with a sweeping move there on the turn and was able to hold on in the stretch here to just hold off Blow the Whistle by about a diminishing half length there on the wire as it was Midnight Act to take the sixth here at Penn National. $17, $7, 420 Blow the Whistle, who would have given t uh, Tim Kreiser and Edwin Gonzalez yet another win on the card. In second, seven sixty five twenty, And number two, Bolt Brotherhood, two eighty to show. $2 exact to eight nine, one hundred fifty six dollars sixty cents. The one dollar trifecta, eight nine and two, three hundred six dollars even. The Dime Super, eight nine two five, one hundred forty eight dollars ninety six cents. The two dollar double, five and eight, forty eight eighty. And the 50 cent pick three, three, five, and eight, 2805. The winner is owned by James and Kelly Davis, trained by Flint Stites, was bred by Glen Hill Farms, and ridden to victory by Andrew Wolfsant for his second winner on the card. And we kick off the late double here with race number seven. This is a $4,000 claiming event for PA bred fillies and mares, three year olds and upward, which have not won a race in the last six months. They're going for a purse of 10,000 over six furlongs on the sloppy main track, and we had a field of seven PA breads line up for this one. There's not a giver came away well. Sneaky Calgore moves up. There goes Vibrant Ginger along the rail, and Tizawagalia's on the move the outside. 
Vibrant Ginger takes over, opens up by two and a half. Tizzawick Elliott now second. Moving up now, here's Spring Away to take third. And uh, to the outside, not a giver is fourth. Sneaky Gowgirl now races fifth. Then inside comes Puppet. And at the back is Weekend Serenade. 22 and 1 for the opening quarter. Vibrant Ginger clear by about four, four and a half lengths as they run midway through the turn here. Uh, toward the inside, trying to move up is Puppet. Then uh, to the outside comes Sneaky Cowgirl along with Spring Away and. Uh, the four outside Tizzawig Galia with not a giver and at the back then Weekend Serenade. They're at the top of the stretch. Vibrant Ginger's the one to catch. The lead's about three. Sneaky Cowgirl is now beginning to move closer down the center. They're then uh, followed uh, by a Puppet and to the outside. Spring away. Sneaky Cowgirl strikes the front now with a 16th to go and she's opened up. Sneaky Cowgirl to win it. Vibrant Ginger will hold second. We'll have a photo for third. Might have gone to not a giver. Disappointment for redheads everywhere again as it looked like Vibrant Ginger might be a winner at the 16th pole, but Sneaky Cowgirl just blew right on by from that point on, relished the off going, and pulled away for an easy win to give Tim Kreiser his fourth winner on the evening. And it was Sneaky Cowgirl getting the job done, 440, 260, 220. Vibrant Ginger once again second, $463, and not a giver. 320 to show. Two dollar exact to two and one sixteen forty. One dollar trifecta to one and eight twenty three twenty. The dime super two one eight and five nine dollars eighty two cents. The two dollar double eight and two forty eighty. And the fifty cent pick three five eight and two twenty seven ninety five. The winner was bred in Pennsylvania by Xanthus Farms Incorporated, owned by Ronald Ulrich, trained by Tim Kreiser for his fourth win on the evening, and ridden to victory by Julio Hernandez. And we close out this July 10th card with a $5,000 claiming event. This is for three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races. They are going six furlongs over the sloppy main track for a purse of 11800 And we had a field of eight line up for the finale. They're off. Get the point broke well. Conky moves up, and toward the insider comes Sakru, the far outside Benevolent Prince. Conky leads at a length now. Get the point is second. Benevolent Prince races third. Seismic Jolt now rushes up a closer fourth. They're then followed by Shy Town now with Sakru, and then comes Harper PM and Drossel Moon. 22 and 2 for the opening quarter. Conky on top here as they race to the turns. Got it a length and a half. Seismic Jolt inside. Now second. Benevolent Prince races third. Get the point is racing fourth. Shy Town is next fifth. They're then followed by Harper PM with Drossel Moon and back to last. Then Sakaru. It's Conky on top here. Has it by about three lengths. Benevolent Prince has moved to second. Toward the rail, Seismic Jolt is back to third. Then comes Shy Town as they race to the eighth pole. Conky leads it just a length now. Benevolent Prince trying to challenge. Seismic Jolt inside third with about two and a half to make up. Conky clings to the lead. Benevolent Prince is right there. Shy Town trying to move up now. Conky, Benevolent Prince, these two will decide it. Photo finish. Photo finish here, Benevolent Prince or Conky, and it'll be tight for third and fourth as well. Well, perhaps he was thinking of being a little true to his name there and uh, let Conky have the win here. But uh, in the end, he said, nah, this one's for me, as Benevolent Prince just keeps grinding and grinding and grinding and just gets the win by about a head there in the finale here at Penn National. So it was Benevolent Prince, 18 20 10 80 and $4. Conky. $23.1040, and, and Seismic Jolt got the photo nod for third to $60. $2 exact, a 9 and 7, $330.40. The $1 trifecta, 9, 7, and 4, $619.20. And Those great exotic payouts continue here at Penn National. The Dime Super, 9, 7, 4, and 2, $342.25. The Double, 2 and 9, 48, 60. And the 50 Cent Pick 3, 8, 2 and 9, 92, 80. Again, there was no late Pick 5 on this card, so that money of just over 2,500 carries over into Wednesday's card. The winner is owned by AJ Win Win Stables, LLC. Trained by Brandon Culp. 
Bred by Nancy Terhoon, Ernest Frabos, and Darley Stable. And Ridden to Victory by Edwin Gonzalez for his third winner on the evening. So that is going to do it for this July 10th card. We hope you had some nice winners there and took advantage of some of those nice prices that we had paying out tonight. Our next live racing date, Wednesday, July 15th, 2020. 6 p.m. post as always. Hopefully we'll have that super high five and late pick five carryover available for that card. This is Doc, and as always, if you had a really nice score this evening, consider paying a little bit of that forward to any of the wonderful thoroughbred racetrack charities that are out there. They need that money now more than ever. We will see you next time right here on the Penn National Playback.